So welcome back after the tea break. So this section is a feedback session with a valedictory function. So we will have a guest uh, coming in later at 12:30 uh, to conclude the workshop. But until that time, we, this is a feedback session which is open for feedback. Uh, so two rules here. One is uh, you are free to ask any question, but I will. Uh, insist that you tell something about the workshop, give us some form of feedback. So you could ask a question, but in addition to this, you should also comment on the workshop, like well, how did you find the workshop, uh, if you had any faced any issues, you could share us with us, if you have any suggestions also you could share with us. So whether or not you have a question uh, related to the concepts or labs or any other thing, uh, we do want to hear some feedback from you. So that is the rule number one. Uh, the rule number two is we would ideally like to give priority to those remote centers that have not had an opportunity to ask a question so far. So if you have already asked questions uh, in the past, please refrain for some time before uh, pressing the hand button to uh, ask a question. We will like the ones who have not been given an opportunity so far to ask a question to take precedence. So others please refrain, the ones who did not have an opportunity so far, please press the hand button. Good morning ma'am. Huh. On behalf of Siliguri Institute of Technology, myself Sutapa Bhattacharya are really very thankful to IIT for organizing two week IST workshop on computer networking. Most of us having only theoretical concept of networking. But this workshop provided us practical as well as theoretical concept. The concept of Bodhi tree to teach and reach faculties are understanding. The Bodhi tree reaches us with excellent materials. We also want to mention the talk of Professor Sridhar Ayar and Professor Bhaskaran Raman. Their session was excellent also. We are really happy to know the IIT is very much concerned about to teach us. Thus, how to teach different subjects properly with different methods. The lab sessions were really very good, but we expected some more details, explanations on NS2 and socket programming. We faced some difficulties to solve last two days lab assignment. Apart from all, these things, we are mesmerized to your knowledge, what are sharing to us and your presentations. Okay, uh, thank you for your uh, feedback. Uh, we will definitely, as I said, it is an ongoing process. Uh, we do want to add on more material to make it more uh, user friendly. Definitely more material on the labs is uh, forthcoming. Um, so yeah, once we have the material, we will again reach out to you all and share the material with you. And thank you for the very nice feedback. Uh, my question is related to research topic. Huh. What is the research scope in t fast TCP? Fast TCP? Yeah. See, if you define fast TCP, then there is no research scope. As I said, TCP, uh, there are a lot of variants of TCP. Uh, but as I said, TCP is also another area that is more or less beaten to death. There are all kinds of work has already happened. Coming up with something new in that space, I think is very difficult. So there is always some tweaking of something here, something there, but it is all incremental work. Uh, but that said, there is still work that happens. So for example, in the recent SICCOM, the conference that I have mentioned, there are some uh, papers on TCP, how to uh, improve the performance of TCP in uh, different settings. So you should read up on some of the recent papers that come up in some of these good conferences. Then you will get to know what is the research work that happens in TCP. But as I said, unless somehow it so happens that uh, uh, you came up with a 
great idea in that space. It's very difficult to come up with something new in that space since lot of work has already happened on TCP. I have another question. Hmm. Quality of the practice quizzes was very excellent. Uh, can we get some uh, question from that practice quizzes in a single file? Yeah, this I had already mentioned. We do not want to give away all the quizzes like that because we do want people to use the platform. Otherwise, there is no reason for anyone to use the platform. Yeah, the MP4s are free, quizzes are not free. Sorry about that. Uh, very good morning, ma'am. This is RC1249, Sri Ramakrishna Institute of Technology, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. Uh, myself, Praveen Raja. And uh, uh, we attended so many workshops under IIT Bombay, uh, DBMS, computer programming. But this computer networking is a wonderful workshop because to introduce a new tool like Bodhi Tree, it is a very useful tool and also uh, uh, it is a, a, a new technique to handle uh, the theory as well as the uh, practical part. So, we enjoyed the lot for the uh, last one week. So, thank you very much for introducing this new technique, ma'am. Uh, and also, on behalf of Sri Ramurishna Institute of Technology, principals, managing trustee, faculty members, wish you all the best for uh, completing your assignment. Uh, on uh, the multimedia textbook. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thanks a lot for your uh, very nice feedback. Definitely, I mean, uh, it feels good to know that the amount of effort you have put in, people are appreciating it. But that said, if you have criticism also, please feel absolutely free to share because one improves only via criticism. You can't just feel good about the good things. One has to feel a little bit bad about what you have done. That's when you improve further. So, I mean, this is an open remark for all the remote centers. Uh, it definitely feels good to good, get good feedback. But if you have issues uh, or something you like to criticize about it, uh, I'm not going to feel bad about it. So please, by all means, share your criticisms as well. Thank you. Uh, my question is, for socket programming, uh, is it better to use the C or C++ or, uh, or to use the Java program? Which one is better? So, as I said, you could do socket programming with either. You could use Java or C++. C++ gives lot of the internal details become more evident to you because Java hides many of these uh, internal details. It provides just very clean APIs for you to use. So it's a so I would say whatever it's more important to learn how to do socket programming. So whatever you are comfortable with, if you feel you are comfortable in with Java, just get started with it. If you are comfortable in C, then get started with it. If you are comfortable in both, then I would have a slight more preference for C, just because it gives lot more detail. Not only that, if you are going to go into more advanced uh, uh, coding. Then Java doesn't expose what are called raw sockets. These are very useful uh, if you are doing, uh, I mean, this is an advanced concept also, but uh, certain things are not exposed via Java. So if you really want to uh, use some of these things, then C++ is the way to go. But for a beginner, either is fine. Whatever is com makes you comfortable. Very good morning, ma'am. Very good morning. Uh, the best thing in your workshop is your the video lectures which you have provided on the Bodhi tree. Uh, but I, I would like to give you a bit of selection, uh, suggestion. Mm -hmm. Can you please embed the national anthem in the morning session of every day? Yeah, we will give that suggestion to the people uh, workshop staff. Yeah, I will. I'll pass that information to them. Because obviously you do start uh, every lecture of, of yours with a prayer. So, why can't with the workshop? Sure. Sure, I'll pass this feedback to the concerned people. Thanks for that, ma'am. Huh. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for organizing this workshop. Uh, it has helped us in learning a lot of things. Uh, just one complaint I would have is that uh, there should have been at least one session on uh, NS2 and socket programming uh, so that it would have helped us in doing things better and in implementing things better. And uh, 
regarding today's lecture i have just one question is that is when you spoke about mpls uh, what information does this mpls tag contain and how does it improve router speeds and ensure or improve quality of service Okay, regarding your first question about NS2, rather feedback on NS2 and socket programming, the material has already been put on Bodhi tree. There, has, there are uh, videos on NS2, including uh, a uh, demo of it, as well as socket programming. The expectation was that you would have watched those videos uh, before ex attempting the exercises. So, from my side, I think I did put them up. Uh, so maybe majority of you or maybe some of you uh, have not gone through it before the exercise yeah, and does make it difficult if you do not go through them. Uh, regarding your uh, second question on M MPLS, the tag basically contains the virtual circuit identifier, it is a label if you know the concept of virtual circuits, you identify a flow with a label. The same similar concept is there in MPLS except that it is not an individual flow, you could identify an entire IP prefix with a label. Uh, so, it is uh, more sophisticated than regular virtual circuit switching. Uh, these are called forward equivalence class. So, you could define some such class based on some criteria and uh, bind many flows to the same label. So, that is one big advantage of MPLS. The speed up of MPLS that is achieved is as I said earlier, typically in datagram networks you use the uh, longest prefix match which means within your routing table which in a core router could be uh, millions of such routing tables, there may be multiple entries that match. So, search is the algorithmic search is lot more difficult, it takes more time. Whereas, when you use a label, you could view the label as an index into your uh, uh, routing forwarding table. So, you just need to suppose if you are maintaining it as a form of an array, you are basically telling this entry is at position uh, 2032, in which case you just access it there, read out the label and uh, interface outgoing label and push it. So, it makes things much faster. Um, the concept of a forward equivalence class as I have mentioned is used to implement traffic engineering and thereby quality of service. Uh, how it does it as I said involves lot more detail, I cannot go into it in the interest of time. Um, usually the video transmission is done through VBR variable bit rates, right? but the nature of video is a uh, streaming that is mostly streaming protocol are used for that. Why you why we use the VBR? Why not uh, CBR? Can you explain it? Yeah, so the nature of video is like that. See the so for example, if you are watching a movie, some scenes are very static, like there is not much stuff happening. Whereas some action sequences, for example, where the hero is hitting the villains or whatever it is, there's lot of uh, motion. So it is inherent in the nature of a video to generate a variable bitrate stream. So, over time the amount of bits to capture the action on the scene are going to vary. So, thereby it produces a variable bitrate uh, video, uh, but to some extent these issues are handled through this playback buffer. So, you do not play the video right away, you buffer the content to some extent and then start to play in the hope that uh, some of this variability gets averaged out and you would not see this uh, playback uh, problems uh, when you are playing the video because the buffer tries to smooth out some of the variability in the incoming traffic. Uh, another question is, uh, is actually the we face a problem uh, when we go for the uh, to get the contents from the site. Uh, why you you didn't use the YouTube as a private channel uh, for the accessing uh, these videos? See, as I said, I wanted this is a multimedia textbook. I wanted a structure imposed on them. I wanted the quizzes to go along with the concept. I want slides to be there. Uh, I wanted to monitor your performance. There are many things I wanted to do as part of the platform. Um, we really wanted to test it out at such a scale, see what is happening. Uh, so, that is one of the reasons. In fact, the reason the platform was developed is 
to impose such a structure in the textbook as well as to monitor the progress of the students. YouTube actually does not give any of this. Uh, that said, finally, when we uh, face these problems, we could share the videos instead of a Google Drive, I could put it up on YouTube. Uh, I just did not do it, just, I mean, I do not know. Uh, YouTube, I have never uploaded videos, there is some learning curve. Uh, it just was easy for me to share with uh, Google Drive. I did not give it much thought. This is Vidya from Remote Center 1303, Srinarayana Gurugulam College of Engineering, Kerala. Um, we have a question, like in the transport layer, we have different versions of TCP, like TCP, Renault, Taho, um, Cubic, etc. Uh, what could be the general TCP version commonly used in real-time systems? So typically, the real-time systems use TCP SAC the selective acknowledgement option of uh, TCP. Most of the real-time systems use that. Regarding the feedback, actually ma'am, uh, your talk about uh, future trends in computer network was uh, really good and uh, some of our faculties, I hope uh, they would be able to identify areas in computer networks for their research and uh, ThinkPair shared by Sridhar Iyer was really helpful and uh, the flipped classroom concept uh, I think we don't really able to implement because we are having a predefined method of teaching. But as far as uh, from your perspective, the, the classroom was really good. And the lab session, I hope we got a really wonderful hands-on experience with the NS2, Wireshark as well as TCP dump. Uh, your Writing tips by Bhaskar and Raman was also good. We wish you and your technical team best of luck for your I mean, future projects. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thanks a lot for your feedback. First of all, I want to thank Rudikri for a wonderful programming training scheme. And I would like to thank Mr. Ayer for the Think, Pair and Share scheme and Mr. Bhaskaran for the tips on project handling system. And uh, this uh, training program was a good thing that the teachers can gain some knowledge to express their uh, knowledge and everything to get uh, a new thing to their life. So, and uh, I would like to all the uh, staffs uh, for participating in this thing. And uh, my question is that uh, in during the serial data transmission, for transmitting the different numbers of data, uh, if one packet will be lost and uh, it will be transmitting through the different numbers of hop node and what will happen in the receiver side and what is the role of the hop node during this transmission. So when you are, uh, first thank you for your feedback and secondly, when you are sending a bunch of packets, yeah, if a packet gets lost and uh, if the packets are taking different paths, what this manifests at the receiver is you could get out of order packets. So for example, you send 1, 2, 3, 4, you may get 1, 2, 4, 3 or some packets internally, I mean some packets like 2 could be lost in which case you will get 1, 4, 3, something like that can happen at the receiver. So most of the, uh, depends upon the context, so if uh, uh, you are doing some uh, link layer uh, link layer protocols like our ARQ at that level which normally Ethernet does not support. So let us talk about the internet, within the internet often this is handled at the transport layer. So the transport layer will uh, reorder the packets as well as uh, recover from the lost packets through retransmissions, put them all in order and then pass it to the application layer. So that is being handled by the protocols within the internet to ensure that even though many such things can happen, you still have mechanism in place to overcome them at the appropriate layer, which is often the transport layer. I am very much happy to attend this uh, workshop and uh, after attending this workshop, I have uh, get interest to research on this topic after listening to you and uh, uh, the different professors. I am somewhat excited to attend this uh, uh, program. My question is ma'am, how the five layers are installed? In the system, whenever we are connecting internet, then uh, the data is transmitted to these five layers. So, how these layers are installed in the system? So, as I said, uh, uh, 
all these layers except for application level is a user level thing you run it as processes so you can run uh, any application you could for example you wrote that send udp.c you executed it and you ran it so that's all being done at the application layer that is something which you could do that is what we call runs in the user space applications but anything below it which is the transport network uh, link drivers all of them are implemented at the kernel space so these are implemented as uh, different uh, modules which get loaded on you could for example if you change your uh, network card and you install some other card it can come with an another driver so you load that module so that you can control so all this is in the kernel space so unless you do some kind of kernel programming uh, it's not easy for you to get access uh, to this uh, code so uh, if you want to know internally what is happening you should read some books on kernel programming uh, then you will know what is happening internally within a host i, I would like to thank you ma'am for patiently hearing the questions and answering the same and uh, i would like to give the uh, feedback regarding the lab we are uh, experiencing here very new aspects of computer networking and we are enjoying the packet delivery packet transformation and dropping of the packet so thanks a lot for uh, showing us and making us aware of new aspect of this computer networking thank you ma'am okay thank you for your feedback hello yes go ahead thank you and uh, your team uh, for the excellent material that you have provided online and also also the clarity and the quality of the video that you have provided is very good uh, so whatever uh, input you have given during these things actually really it has helped us to sharpen the knowledge we have and so that we can also distribute the same knowledge to the students which will uh, help them to understand it better the concepts and uh, even in the practicals but uh, at the same time so i'm expecting maybe in the future uh, some more uh, practical materials and also some concepts in the advanced computer networking if you can have so that will be great for us it will help us uh, uh, to a great extent in later point of time and also at the same point of time i would like to ask a very general question ma'am so basically when you talk about computer networking uh, there are two approaches one is a top down approach uh, what exactly in the iit you follow for teaching the students and also what you think is the best approach to go for the student to teach so that they can learn better okay, okay thank you for your feedback um, definitely i had mentioned this before also we do want to add on more material to the current concepts um, add more labs also to the current concepts so this is an ongoing thing as and when we add we will share it with all of you uh, that said coming to your uh, second question related whether top down or bottom up is better i personally prefer bottom up because of two things one is Uh, application layer i feel i ha- i mean i have this generic feeling that uh, it doesn't have any major concepts like anything related to computer networking the concepts are at the link layer uh, network layer and the transport layer so application layer kind of uh, uh, doesn't have much concepts so when you start from the top uh, down you spend a lot of time on teaching the different applications but it doesn't give you uh, much concepts um the other reason why i prefer to go uh, bottom up is it also gives this very uh, building block layer approach to teaching so you start with how to communicate just between two hosts um then you build how do you communicate between tens of hosts then you tell how do you communicate between thousands of hosts which is the extended lan when you talk about uh, tens and thousands of hosts which becomes the network layer and so it gives that kind of a very structure to it but that said so when we teach our own csc undergrad students uh, we do bottom up just because we can get to spend lot more time so when you start with the application layer what happens is the first 3 4 weeks go there so the amount of time left for the bottom layer gets kind of squeezed when you do bottom up you spend lot more time on the relevant concepts and then you can squeeze in the application you could decide to skip some applications if you there is no time or add on if there is time so it gives some flexibility like that 
but when i teach so we do teach computer networks to other department uh, students also for example metallurgy it's a institute level course we offer whenever i teach them i do uh, top down because when it comes to other department people they don't really need a lot of in depth concepts they are coming more as a users of computer network they are more interested in how the applications work and provide just an overview of the network transport and link layer so there we spend lot more time on the application layer and little uh, bit less time on the uh, lower layers so that's how i do it it's a personal preference as i said up to you whatever uh, logic appeals to you yeah mom actually if you go for a bottom up approach so in that case uh, basically as far as the lab is concerned so from our side from my experience i am telling so sometimes we face difficult in the lab so because uh, if you go start from uh, physical layer then what are the sort of lab we can conduct uh, as the beginning for, for the students okay so even for that so again the way uh, so i do it bottom up and there is a associated lab for it so this is typically what i do uh, the very first so as you saw even in my lectures there is an introduction that talks about osi protocol stack the interlayer communication this is fundamental so the very first lab is more or less identical to your lab 1 and lab 2 so the ones that you have done multiplexing demultiplexing uh, encapsulation all that is part of our lab 1 here uh, the second lab again i do that uh, as you saw i also measure i also have a concept in introduction on goals and metrics which talks about what are the goals of computer networks how do you measure delay latency packet loss blah blah so my second lab is on ns2 that deals with those concepts so which is basically they get a grounding in the introductory material they understand what delay is what losses are uh, what is uh, packet stream so on so forth and uh, through the first lab which is on encapsulation they get to know the osi protocol stack well and from that point on so the third exercise which i often give is this uh, torchlight based communication which is basically dealing with framing error correction error detection where they have to design things on your own uh, you could also do for example ns2 based on csma uh, cd uh, type of exercises so you could measure what the throughput is as users are increasing so on so forth so that's where link layer some of the arq mechanisms it through simulation all of them can be incorporated as part of ns2 uh, or as implementation the torchlight based communication then you cut to the network layer again network layer you have seen uh, some of the labs arc based dhcp based we also have labs using a tool called bnu ml uh, which lets us uh, do bridging which lets us uh, do ip configuration misconfiguration of ip addresses subnet mask assignment so on so forth so we do all this at the network layer and then once we get to the transport layer uh, again we use uh, some simulator uh, ns2 to uh, do the tcp level uh, analysis tcp reno versus new reno or tcp taho versus uh, reno that kind of tcp level and when we come to the application layer we basically ask them to do some project based on socket programming so that's how we go bottom up no oh, ma'am actually so if you can give a list of experiments and do it some details to which to be followed as far as your tcp i mean uh, top uh, bottom up approach is concerned that will be really help us see whatever exercises i could do i already shared with you the other exercises dealing with network configuration as i said involves this vnu ml tool which is a nightmare for us itself to install so i i mean i absolutely cannot provide any support to if you somehow figure out how to install it on your own i can give you additional exercises but uh, that installation is a very tricky uh, installation it doesn't work very easily uh, ma'am uh, we are uh, much benefited from iit workshop uh, that avail us at our doorstep this remote center so i was any special through the first workshop organized in 2009 by iit mumbai that is sdes this our journey was started from that workshop and today still continue and in future going to be continue so ma'am at this moment i wish to share my my output that here in this workshop this workshop excellent in terms of uh, different concept we having like in share and share flipped classroom and 
what we most expected from your end that that is our workshop should be majorly focused on uh, issues in different technology like in computer network networking programming and other now my question is that uh, what are the current development in 128 bit encryption of ssl protocol and second question is that now what are the utility of ru pay payment gateway gateway uh, recently uh, launched by the government of india um, so your first question is on ssl 128 bit okay that's a security thing as i said i have very minimal background in security so i don't want to handle any security questions now uh, your second question i did not quite get government has initiated what are you pay payment gateway payment gateway like visa and government of india has launched are you pay payment gateway actually i don't know about it so <laughs> i have to uh, i cannot comment because i am not aware of what this gateway is madam i would like to know that uh, if two different uh, wireless technology can be converge or not means if i need to send one packet from wifi and i am getting the same packet from another terminal uh, which is having a bluetooth then uh, this convergence is possible or not and if it is possible then which are the tools necessary to uh, successfully this convergence okay so currently each technology for example wifi defines its own physical layer its own media access control bluetooth has its own physical layer its own uh, media access control so it's like two people talking in different languages so you cannot understand what the other person is telling though you could detect their energy so bluetooth can detect wifi's energy if it is transmitting in the same spectrum but you cannot interpret any of the bits because it's following something uh, uh, something different modulation scheme which you don't know how to demodulate so currently definitely it is not feasible for them to interact in the fashion you suggested so for any modulation technique that you use the receiver has to use an equivalent modulation technique for it to uh, interpret the data to some extent with the use of these things called software defined radios where you configure the radios based on parameters so at the receiver for example uh, you know you have the sender has used modulation 1 it could potentially in software load that modulation and decode it uh but that's slightly i mean there is work happening in that space but uh, the radios are pretty expensive so anything uh, currently let me just conclude that you cannot make them both talk with each other in the fashion you have described if try to make uh, any uh, mediator device which can be uh, convert from wifi to bluetooth from the same server and then configure both the device with the same server then it is possible or not so it depends on what you are doing for example you want to send a packet from wifi to some other user who is sending a bluetooth so you could send this wifi packet to another uh, intermediate host which has a wifi interface based on which it will decode the packet it will send up the protocol stack and then you are again using this intermediate host has two interfaces one is wifi another is bluetooth then it will again come down and go out via the bluetooth interface that is feasible so it's something like in a common language you have a translator who understands both languages who is sitting listening translating it and passing it on the other end for that uh, which tool is useful there is no tool you have to write uh, you have to do the implementation you have to set up a host uh, that can have two interfaces there is nothing readily available like that you have to set it up so we have here uh, professor patak as well as professor gaitonde so i will request them to please come here and uh, give some concluding remarks of the workshop good afternoon and i am very happy to welcome professor gaitonde who has been my colleague for almost four decades and uh, with me he has been a great uh, participant and supporter of this t10kt program and with me he is also embarking on a new journey of offering some of our courses 
has massive open online courses, uh, first through EDX and maybe later on an Indian platform. So welcome, Professor Gayatunde. Please have a seat. Before uh, handing over to Professor Gayatunde and requesting him to say a few words as a valid address, I thought I would like to uh, go over to a few remote centers myself. But please don't ask me any questions on networking. That is the domain of Professor Kameshwari. Uh, but I would like to have any general feedback about the workshop and how you have benefited. You can go to two or three. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that I am removing all the hand raises that have been raised so far. And I would like to request only those remote centers which have never interacted with us at all during this workshop. Never interact, they did not get a chance to interact at all. And I would like only those remote centers to raise hands, and then we'll go on first come, first serve basis. So I'm requesting my colleague to remove all raised hands now. And I request only those remote centers which have never interacted to raise hands. Uh, can you can you clear up? Srinath Ji Institute, over to you for some comments. Good afternoon, Hello. please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. First of all, I want to thank IIT Mumbai. This workshop was very fruitful as well as the students. We got a lot of knowledge about networking, especially the board triple platform. As flipped class, uh, flipped classroom is very effective. We will definitely implement this concept from the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Go to the other center. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. On the behalf of Mahan IT Bhopal, I am Sanjeev Sharma. We are very thankful to you, sir, for organizing uh, such a, a very great kind of uh, workshop for, uh, for us. Especially, I am thankful to you to provide the uh, material that was uh, very uh, uh, good quality material and the approach that you have provided the practical approach for the computer networks. Because, because before this workshop, we are not aware of uh, such a kind of practical approach in the computer network. So, you, your uh, quality of the material was very good and the quiz was very, very good. The assignment that you have provided was very good and especially this workshop uh, uh, provides us to interact uh, with the experts and all of the remote centers are interacting and they are raising the questions. So, uh, it is also uh, clearing our uh, various uh, doubts regarding the subject. So, we are very thankful for uh, uh, organizing such a uh, kind of workshop, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will just comment briefly while he goes to the next remote center. You mentioned that uh, the approach was very practical. Well, first of all, Professor Kameshwari is to be complimented for making uh, very rigorous set of tools available to all the remote centers where you can do experiments. But I would like to mention that there cannot be good engineering education unless there is a lot of hands-on. And what you mentioned uh, raises uh, some concern in my mind from old times that in many of our colleges, most subjects, uh, the teaching concentrates on theory teaching, whereas corresponding hands-on experience in the lab is absolutely vital for students to understand proper problem solving. So I'm glad that you mentioned that and I hope you and all other colleagues across the country would actually adopt this approach in their teaching. Let's go to the next uh, remote center, please. This Thakur College of Engineering. Hello. The sessions were very good, especially the lab sessions. We got a very good knowledge. And the videos which were uploaded were very nice and the quizzes were a little bit difficult but if you try to attend you can go for it. And thank you very much. To the observation uh, by the lady that things were a little bit difficult, I will tell you the approach and philosophy of IIT education and I feel no reason why the same cannot be adopted everywhere else. Our students are routinely given only a chance to answer simple questions. Our examinations also contain simple questions. These fail to challenge the minds of students. It is wrong to assume that if the students do not have adequate preparation, they will not benefit from 
attempting to solve difficult questions. This is another advice I would like to give all, to all the colleagues that whatever question papers that you set, whatever quizzes that you set, please ensure that there are at least some very challenging questions, including some which even you cannot solve easily. That is the way to challenge the minds of the students and you will find unbelievable improvement in the general learning of all students. Thank you for that comment. Let's go over to Center 1271, Jawaharlal Nehru National College. Yeah, over to you. Good morning, sir. Uh, regarding the uh, TPS, implementation is now uh, tough to us. Uh, implement. As per our syllabus, are governed by VTU and the Technical Education Board. Uh, TPS implementation is not implementation is somewhat tough. As well as uh, coming to flipped classroom, it's not going to work. As we have uh, outcome-based education, so all the things are con so we need to have another uh, op option for these kind of things. And apart from everything was uh, fine. Uh, we have worked uh, too much good. Uh, too much well in the labs as well as INS2 and all. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My observation is that independent of which method of education uh, your university follows or independent of the scheme of teaching learning, useful material in any subject can always be used innovatively by the teachers to benefit their students. So please do not tag any of our efforts or any other efforts in the world as being compulsorily attached to a specific model of teaching and learning. It is, what is important is all the basic notions are discussed, practical implementations are discussed, students are challenged with the problems and then no matter what kind of education system you follow, you should be able to use these basic building blocks in your own teaching. Thank you so much. Let's go over to uh, another uh, remote center. Sir, uh, this is Manoj Yadav from Dronachar College of Engineering. We are thankful to IIT Mumbai who given us such type of important things about the computer networks and uh, our participants, they have learned a lot from this workshop. Thank you. Thank you one and all, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, remote center 1342. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank the team IIT for conducting a, such a very nice, good uh, workshop. Although there is very good quality of the content, moreover, I would like to ask that uh, there is one scope about the improvement. Uh, here, there is the video lectures that you had played. Uh, the audio quality was not appropriate. Second thing, uh, all the live sessions, uh, the quality of all the live session is very good. And I would like to request you kindly provide us the video of all the live sessions that held during the, this uh, five days workshop. Uh, if it is possible, kindly upload on the Google Drive. Uh, most important, a very good, uh, huge, uh, uh, round of applause for all the experts, especially Dr. Deepak Fatak, uh, Madam Kameshwari, Dr. Ayer, Dr. Bhaskaran, and a very, very special thanks to the technical team uh, of uh, Mr. Sushant. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you a uh, huge. I would like to ask all my participants to have a huge uh, round of applause. Thank you so much. We will be uploading these videos, not on Google Drive, but there is a standard site on which all these videos are uploaded. I will request Sushant to make note of the fact that not just the lecture videos, but the interaction videos should also be uploaded. This will be done in due course of time. As you are aware, we always release all contents in our T10KT workshops in open source, so that not only the participants such as you, but even other students and teachers can benefit. Thank you very much for that suggestion. We will go to one or two more institutions. JS College of Engineering, Kalyani. A very good afternoon, sir. This is Soham Sangupta from JS College of Engineering, Remote Center 1335. 
So first of all, I would like to thank on behalf of all the participants from the center to IIT by uh, and especially the speaker, Professor Kameshwari for holding such a big uh, event and uh, which was really I felt it was needed because for uh, last 10 years of my teaching I have been digging into networking and everything. So I have always uh, felt the need to make the students feel the necessity of the what should I say that the TCP IP stack. They feel the stacks are just the figures on the textbooks. So uh, what I do is uh, quite matched with Madam's, uh, you know, um, uh, frequency. So uh, what I make my students do is to explore themselves the stack by using Vashek tool. Uh, and also I use them to uh, get on to hands on with WinPC cap uploaded by Intel uh, on which they can use a socket or a or a half web socket uh, programming which uh, makes the underlying things. So thank you. So uh, uh, be, uh, I'll brief up things, uh, things that could have made this event a bigger uh, one and more uh, prosperous one first. Uh, had we got chances to work hands on with workshop, uh, not only workshop but also on packet generation tools like HCAP and second, uh, it had been better if we could get some more time to, uh, you know, get in the, into the uh, programming uh, of a kernel of a Linux okay, to make right. a custom TCAP stack. And third was, uh, I felt this AV software is sometimes making a, a lack of synchronization uh, because I think the software is using WebSocket technology which is not properly synchronized with the user, user interface. And that's all from my side. Uh, so I hand the, over my, hand the mic over to my colleague. Hello. Uh, I want to stress that this workshop was extremely well organized and we all congratulate you and thank you for that. Uh, my next, next request would be to continue a line of communication between the centers and the coordinating body so that if we have any other queries in future, we can always raise that in a forum. Uh, secondly, uh, we would like to request if there is any scope for collaborative work between the centers and IIT Bombay under your mentorship. Very good points all. I just briefly comment. You see, if you are not able to work on Wireshark sufficiently, it would be true about many other tools. And that's the whole point. The whole point is that each one of you, when you go back to your own respective colleges, don't stop. That is where you start working actually. Get a group of students who are interested. Introduce new lab practical sessions. Introduce new BTEC projects or BE projects and continue to work with them. In fact, working in isolation, you will discover many facets on your own which will be both challenging and more rewarding. Of course, you can always interact and to answer to the question from, uh, to the point from our other colleague, we do propose to keep the Moodle on for quite some time. However, you must appreciate that the moment this workshop is over, like you, Professor Kameshwari also has about 1,000 other things to do. Don't forget that she was awarded the Excellence in Teaching Award of the Institute, which is a very rare award, and which means that once the semester starts, 24 by 7, she will be working on that. I am proposing to the institute and to the ministry that we could keep a set of teaching assistants regularly attached to the Moodle over coming semester and a year who could perhaps answer these questions, who could uh, uh, perhaps classify them and some un unanswered questions could be forced up to Professor Kameshwari who could then release a single video lecture for anybody to watch where she might want to answer those questions. Do you think that makes sense, uh, Kamishi? Yeah, I, I do agree that uh, this uh, communication should go on uh, further because uh, I'm also interested in this space. Uh, if there is anything you could potentially use. Uh, so we will look into seeing uh, maybe Moodle is the way forward. So you could post things there. They'll be brought to my notice. And uh, I will get back to you based on uh, what the question is and uh, what the requirements are. I'm personally interested in it. I would like to add more concepts to the video, add more lab exercises to it. Um, and if, uh, as you as a remote center, we are also collecting this post homework where you're supposed to create resources. 
Um, so during that process, if uh, you have certain ideas and you want to uh, create additional labs and uh, come up with that, we could collaborate on that uh, aspect as well. Um, so the communication line definitely from my side is open, though it may not be a direct communication line, but I'm interested in the space. So any questions, I will definitely uh, pay attention to them. Whether I will act on it is, will be a function of uh, my life at that point, what <laughs> priorities uh, I have, but I'm definitely interested. So if it's something that is interesting, I'll definitely uh, interact and collaborate. Uh, we are going to Don Bosco Gauhati. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the entire uh, team of IIT Mumbai for uh, you know, conducting this uh, you know, tremendous uh, practical oriented workshop. And also I would like to thank uh, our remote center, Don Bosco, uh, and thank to Kameshwari uh, for you know, designing such a good and very helpful um, course for the teachers. Thank you all. Thank you so much. We'll just go to one more remote center and then we'll uh, close this. Over to you, Mount Hello, Hello, sir. I'm Ajita from Mount Zion College, Tamil Nadu. And we are very thankful to you and your teams, especially ma'am, Professor Kameshwari, ma'am. She introduced it, some of the tools very well. And, uh, and she, uh, today morning she went on with some modern trends in networking also. That was too good. And we would like to have something, sir. We would like to have an open source tool for cloud implementation. Very interesting that you asked this question. IIT Bombay, as we speak, is involved in implementing an open source cloud. It's called the OpenStack model. Uh, there are a few implementations already around the world. As I said, as we speak, we are trying to implement it. In fact, the MOOCs platform for Indian usage that we are adopting from EDX is likely to be installed and deployed on an open stack model. So that is the open, open source cloud for you. As we learn more about it, we'll share that information also. Thank you very much for bringing it up. In fact, I would like in next six months to one year, each college that you represent could have a small set of servers where you implement a mini or micro cloud and study all utilities on that micro cloud which are available in open source and use it extensively for your own activities. Thank you so much. We'll now close this interaction. Thank you for your very positive feedback. You have taken note of the points that you have raised. First of all, let me introduce Professor Guy Tonde. I briefly mentioned that he has been uh, working with us for a long time. And more importantly, he has been participating in all our teacher training workshops. In fact, it was thanks to his initiative that a large number of other colleagues from mechanical engineering and other engineering departments started participating, making this whole T10KT effort a very inclusive effort across the engineering uh, departments and spectrum. I'll now request Professor Gaitonde to say a few words. Thank you, Professor Fatak. As Professor Fatak said, I have been a rather very willing guinea pig for his experiments, particularly when they extend beyond his core competence of computer science and engineering. <laughs> and he knew this because we have been associated with each other since maybe 1985 or so, when we really started working. And both of us have a common reputation is that when asked to do something, we will initially will not say no. We will do it at least once, very faithfully, very sincerely, and as properly as is possible within the given resources and time constraint. Second time when asked for, we may say no, saying, I have done it once, I have shown how it is to be done, we will not do it again. However, when it came to the NMEI city or Ekalavya project, I have not said no to a second time. I think Professor Fatak uh, is doing some things third or fourth time. Because this has been a really enjoyable experience, particularly because it was the empowerment of teachers. That was the main objective. And although the main objective was the empowerment of teachers, the derived or derivative objectives are maybe better students come out, hence better engineers come out. And finally, those students who graduate 
from better empowered teachers, we will be better engineers, better postgraduate students and finally maybe the next generation of better faculty members in many engineering colleges. So there is some sort of a loopy uh, purpose here. One of the comments which was made directly or indirectly during the interaction took me back to my thermodynamics courses. There the complaint was in the feedback that, sir, we know now what thermodynamics is all about. We understand it very well. We know how to learn it and how to teach it very well. But this doesn't really help in our students clearing the exams which they have to write for getting the degree from the university. I think here we have to do a bit of re-meaning of the empowerment. The teachers are empowered not only to do better teaching, the teachers should also be empowered to put pressure on that subgroup of teachers who are members of boards of studies and various university committees. See, the university syllabus and the examination system is pretty old. And by today's standard, pretty old means maybe even 5 or 10 years old is uh, not just out of fashion. Things are changing so much. 10 years ago, the power of ICT was not really appreciated. Today, it is appreciated. So, use this empowerment to not only do good teaching, but also to canvas and pressurize your colleagues who are on boards of studies and other university committees to get the syllabus and the examination system changed appropriately. Because it is only you can do it just by listening to these courses and studying some subjects in a modern way and a better way is not the end of it. Since it is expected that uh, you will use this for betterment of your teaching learning processes and even educational administration. I am told a survey is being planned and all of you will be partners in that survey. Not only the teachers who have registered for this particular course, but even uh, maybe about 1.5 lakh teachers so far who have uh, registered 85,000 teachers uh, so far who have uh, registered for some course or the other in this series of uh, uh, TKT and T10KT programs. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate a large number of uh, colleague teachers from various colleges who have participated in this workshop to make it successful. I take this opportunity to thank all of them. Take this opportunity to thank all the remote center workshop coordinators and the RC coordinators and the technical staff there. Needless to add, all of this would have been absolutely impossible unless our own teams working almost round the clock had made it possible to conduct this workshop in a seamless fashion. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank my workshop team, my uh, video team and the other backend teams I am very sure that you will not let the momentum slip and you will complete the post-workshop assignment which is supposed to be a team assignment. Kindly do as good a job as is possible. Please use this opportunity to learn something more about collaboration, perhaps long distance, perhaps through email, but it's a very exhilarating experience and you will all benefit from that. Thank you so much. I declare the closure of this workshop now. Please do fill up the online survey and the other assignments in the afternoon. Thank you.